Welcome to the Kistler training program on video, available to all our customers at Kistler.com. This tutorial explains how to correctly mount measuring wheels and optical sensors for optimum performance and results in your test driving activities. Chapter 1 covers the mounting of a Rodine S625 measuring wheel. First, make sure that all required parts are ready at hand. The measuring wheel itself, a hub adapter with nuts and bolts, a stator, a stator alignment gauge, the wheel electronics, a water level. Step one of the mounting procedure is to fit the hub adapter. For safety reasons, it's essential that you use all five bolts as material stress during test driving is substantial. It's advisable that you have your vehicle's handbrake on. Use a torque wrench for the tightening of all five bolts. Now it's time for step two, the fitting of the stator. We provide custom-made stator holders. Make sure it has previously been mounted. Now you can insert the stator. There should be an easy sliding fit. The use of our special alignment gauge is absolutely essential for the stator's flawless function. Attach the gauge with two bolts. Hand tightening will do. Aligning the stator avoids any friction and signal distortion during test driving. Make sure you attach the stator to the holder firmly. Now you can remove the alignment gauge. With the stator in place, you position the cable towards its connector. Make sure it's safely fixed with cable straps. You're ready to mount the Rodine S625. The guiding bolts ensure that the measuring wheel's alignment is basically correct. Now it's time for the wheel bolts. The procedure is pretty much the same as with any wheel mounting. Of course, you can also use a power screwdriver. Now you can remove the guiding bolts and replace them with the wheel bolts. Again, use a torque wrench for tightening. The wheel mounting job is nearly finished. However, a vital part is still to be done, connecting the wheel electronics. You can't do anything wrong. Our system is easy to handle. To be on the safe side, there are reference marks to guide you. That's it. There are another four little screws to tighten and you're done with the basic wheel mounting. You're ready for the last act. The signal amplifier conditioner is preferably placed in the booth. You connect it and switch it on. If everything went well, the remote control unit will show a signal soon. There you go. Congratulations. Chapter 2 describes how you mount a DCA system and an SF2P sensor, in addition to Rodine measuring wheels. Again, make sure that all parts are ready. A wheel interface with bolts. A cable securing rod with holder. The DCA sensor rack. A mini folding rule. DCA electronics with cables. And as an option, an SF2P sensor with accessories box. First, you replace the screws of the wheel electronics with the wheel interface holders. Tighten them firmly. Then you can mount the wheel interface. Tighten the screws firmly as well. The securing rod is very important to avoid system damage or loss in the rugged environment of test driving.
The rod comes with powerful suction cups that are placed on the vehicle's body. Once adjusted to the specific vehicle size, the rod has to be tightened firmly. Make sure it sits tightly on the hub, too. Now it's time to mount the dynamic camber angle sensor rack. It has an inbuilt water level. Please adjust precisely. The rack has to be strongly tightened. Check for firmness. You're approaching the final stage. You can connect the cables to the sensors. We strongly advise to clearly identify the cables beforehand. Now the securing rod's function becomes evident. You put the cables onto the back seat for later connection to the onboard electronics in the booth. For the remainder of your mounting job, you lower the car. Another strong suction cup is placed on the rear window and serves as a redundant anchor for additional safety. You connect your DCA and SF2P sensor electronics and switch them on for a final function test. In between, lest you forget, as soon as there's a signal, check the DCA sensor rack's clearance height. It should be around 20 centimeters. Finally, you check if the signal is okay and the sensors clearly identified. Again, congratulations.